Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the beautiful state of Alaska. We are here with our 2019 Grand Design Solitude and we just finished putting on that insulating skirt right there. We wanna share with you exactly how we did it and whether or not it's been worth it. I'm Jameson. And I'm Ashley. We sold our house, left our lives in Southern California. And are headed north to Alaska where we can be closer to my brothers, Adam and Justin. So just diving right in here, we used a combination of one and a half inch and two inch rigid insulation board. And after working with both, I would definitely recommend the two inch board. It's about the same price, it's gonna insulate better, and it's gonna add some extra structural rigidity. The type of tape you use is very important. Don't use duct tape. Use this silver tape. Duct tape is gonna to start to fail when it gets really cold and it's gonna leave a nasty residue on your trailer when you try to peel it off. This is actual duct tape meant for duct work. It's got a much wider temperature tolerance and it's not gonna leave a residue when you take it off later. So we found the easiest way to cut this stuff is to actually deeply score it with a box cutter and then you can just break it and it's a clean break, it's not gonna be as messy and it's easier than using a drywall saw. The exact technique for attaching the insulation to the trailer took a little bit of experimentation, but in the end, Here's what we feel worked best. So before we get started, we always cleaned the area that we're going to apply the tape to with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. First, we put a strip of tape on the outer corner of the insulation. Then, we put another strip on the inner corner, leaving half of the tape detached. Then, fold back the detached portion, which will allow you to easily place and secure the insulation against the trailer. One quick note about using this tape is that it's actually thin metal, and the edges are extremely sharp, so definitely wear gloves, because it will cut you if you don't. All right, day number two of the RV skirt install. It's currently 26 degrees outside. Now, there's a lot of options for adding support at the bottom of the insulation, and we didn't want to build a frame out of wood, and digging trenches wasn't really an option, not to mention that we don't really have the tools to do any of that. So instead, we tried something else. Hammering metal stakes into the ground on the inside edge of the insulation gives the longer spans more rigidity, then placing blocks on the outside helps lock everything in place. All right, maybe you're thinking that that's not gonna work, and we were skeptical too, but since putting that on and using that method, we actually had a huge windstorm here, and the winds were probably north of 30 to 40 miles an hour gusting, and all of this, all of this, is still intact. So this whole process took us about a day and a half, and that includes all the time it took us to gather the materials. The total cost came out to almost exactly $450, but the big question is, is it worth it? Let's explore that. So, well, we don't have any numbers to compare just yet, like a heating bill before and after or something like that. We can definitely tell that the skirting is working. For example, before we had the skirting on, this little space heater right here could keep us at a comfortable 70 degrees inside here, as long as the external temperature wasn't below 40. But now, this guy can keep it comfortable in here all the way down to about 30 degrees outside, and that is a big difference. The second thing that we've noticed is that the floor is way warmer. I can't really quantify that because I don't have a tool to measure the temperature of the floor with, but before the skirt, it was freezing, and now it's not freezing. And the third thing is right here. This is our thermostat, which we switch over to gas every night, and since we've had the skirting on, the gas heater kicks on far less than it used to. So, was the skirting worth it? Well, we feel like it is, regardless of the cost, which is actually $650, not $450, like I said earlier. But time will tell whether it's gonna save us money or not, and we will definitely pull some electric bills when we have them, and let you guys know whether or not it's saving us money. In the meantime, hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, go ahead and post them down in the comments. We will do our best to go down there and answer them as quickly as we can. 
If you want to check out our other videos on how we got this beast all the way from Southern California up here to Alaska, you can hit the subscribe button so you get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget that we donate 25% of all of our Patreon contributions to help improve the lives of those affected by muscular dystrophy. So if you want to hop over to patreon.com and look us up, we and everyone affected by that crappy disease would definitely appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.